Hey guys, James here and welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video is a little bit different. It's more like a vlog style and I want to share with you a big update. Um, so on Friday, which is today's Tuesday, so just a couple of days ago, I moved to a house where um, I finally have a garage again, uh, like a, an actual garage, not like a, you know, an apartment garage where it's like shared with other people. You can't work on your car. And it's been a couple of years since I've lived in a house where I have my own garage. So this is super exciting for me. That's the old beater beamer looking pretty there after going through the wash. Now, my goal with this garage is to make it a really nice place to be, a really pleasant place to be, clean and and aesthetically pleasing. Uh, and the previous house that I lived in where I had an actual garage, meaning not like a shared garage, well, that house was built in 1959, I think, and the garage was kind of dirty, it was kind of decrepit with, you know, it was open to the attic and like, you know, dirt and stuff could come in. So, it, and I never put in the time, the effort, the money to make it a really nice place to be. So although it was nice to have a, that single car garage, it wasn't like a super nice place to be. And so I want this one to be different. And I'm gonna walk through the different things I have in mind to make this a really great place to be. Now, why do I want it to be a nice place to spend time? Well, because I spend a lot of time in my garage, whether I'm working on my cars, like getting underneath to like, you know, fix something, or, or if I, whether I'm just like in here detailing, cleaning out my cars, I do spend a lot of time in here. So I want it to be a, a nice place to spend time. First thing that I'm having done to this is I'm getting the walls and the ceiling painted. Um, this looks pretty decent right now, but actually, uh, I mean on camera it looks decent, but actually right now this is unfinished drywall. They added the texture, but this is actually, it's just plain old drywall. There's no, there's no actual paint on it. So tomorrow I'm having painters come in, they're going to put primer on it, and they're going to put uh, some paint down. And it's going to be a nice white color that's really nice and bright. Just Actually just like the inside of the house, I'm using the same color. And I'm using <clears throat> an eggshell uh, level of sheen because I want it to be possible to just wipe it clean. Like if I'm, if I'm doing stuff in here or like carrying boxes, Amazon boxes in and I scuff the wall, I want to be able to just wipe that down. And so the painter that I spoke to said that he thinks an eggshell level of sheen is probably uh, the right choice there. The advantage of having a more matte or more flat kind of paint is that that typically looks better. It, it gives it like, it gives the walls this nice uh, kind of gradient when you have light coming down uh, from the lights above. Uh, but the, the disadvantage of a matte or a flat uh, type of paint is that it once you get grime on there, it's like impossible to clean it off. So the shinier the paint is, the easier it is to clean, the more durable it is, but the worse it looks. So, you know, you kind of want to strike the right balance based on what the usage is going to be. And I'm not going to like put my hands on the on the walls when they're covered in like brake dust. Uh, but, you know, I'd like to know that if I accidentally did that, that I would be able to actually wipe it down and it would be okay. So that's the first thing that's going to happen and that's happening tomorrow morning. Painters are coming by, they're going to scope out this place and then we're going to finalize the, the paint color choices and then they're going to start laying down the primer and they're going to get the, the actual, you know, paint and, uh, and then finish it all in one day. The second thing that's happening to this garage is, well, the floor. Right now this is just regular old concrete and the problem with concrete is that it has a lot of texture to it and just like the matte or flat paints, it grabs onto a lot of dust and so you can hear that there's a ton of dust in the floor already and this is like just a brand new house. Um, so what I want to do is is get a, a really nice flooring on here. And now I've looked into epoxy and I've also looked into polyaspartic uh, flooring for garages. And I decided to go with polyaspartic because of a few reasons. Number one, epoxy, well, first of all, epoxy is the one that like everybody talks about, right? Like, oh yeah, I got epoxy for my garage floor. But there are a couple of problems with that. Number one is UV uh, aging. Epoxy tends to turn really yellow uh, when it's exposed to even just a little bit of UV light just from opening the garage every so often or leaving it open to work on your cars, a little bit of UV comes in, it starts yellowing, it doesn't look good. Um, and of course it'll be uneven too if you have you know cars parked on here. That's the first problem. The second problem is that hot tires, uh, well, you know, when you're after you're driving around, hot tires, 
parked on epoxy will actually ruin the epoxy over time if you're if it's not super well done or just actually just over time the epoxy will age and it'll actually start peeling off so that's not great for a garage right maybe it's okay for you know indoors like if you're uh, if you've got some kind of uh, facility indoors sure put epoxy but in a garage uh, apparently it's just not a very good material polyaspartic co uh, floor coverings are much better in terms of durability um, and they just I mean, just overall, they just last a lot longer. They're UV resistant, all that good stuff. The one downside that I've seen with polyaspartic uh, flooring is that some people say that it's more slippery than epoxy, but that can generally be remedied if you put in color chips into the flooring. And that's and that's a very normal practice to put in the color chips. So you see those like those nice like mosaic-y type of patterns on the floor. I guess not really mosaic because it's random. But yeah, you see those color chips and those actually add a lot of grip. So that's what I'm planning to have done. And this house has like these sewer clean outs, uh, these little like mini manhole covers. Those will be painted nice and black so that it looks good. Um, the guys who are doing the flooring are gonna get all the way up to there you know, so that it meets the painted surface there. And on the other side, it's actually particularly important to do that because the concrete goes up pretty high from, uh, I'm trying to coordinate, from here to here, right? That's, that's quite a distance. And so it's gonna look a lot better when the, when the polyaspartic goes all the way up to there. So that's happening at the end of this month, um, at the end of March. And I'm super excited for that. I mean, that's what's gonna transform this place and make it way nicer to be in. Also, with the polyaspartic or even epoxy flooring, it's a lot smoother. The surface is a lot smoother, which means dust and dirt doesn't collect. And so I'm, after I get the flooring done, I'm going to have a RoboVac that just lives in here and it's gonna sweep through every day to clear, to clear out dust that gets tracked in by the cars and just, you know, on the edges of the garage door. That RoboVac is gonna keep this place nice and, and tidy. This house has a bunch of different levels. It's like, it, it's not, it's, it's technically three stories, but it's like, there's like halfway levels. So we have three RoboVacs upstairs, or actually just throughout the house, and I think we're gonna get another one for the garage. So, <laughs> so every day at 10 a.m., you know, the, the, the robots will rise up and, and start uh, cleaning, hopefully cleaning, uh, and hopefully not rebelling because there will be a lot of them. All right, so those are number one and two, the, the paint on the walls and the ceiling and the flooring down below. And once those are done, this garage will be nearly complete. And I think the last thing I'll do is just put up some wall art. Um, I have some really cool pictures of like a pat, I have like a, a, a framed picture of like a patent drawing for an old 911, I think it's from the 993 generation. Um, and then I've got like another, you know, replica of a painting uh, of another 911 that's like, you know, it's got racing livery and all that good stuff. And I've got um, this huge picture of me and and a couple of my friends coming down the corkscrew at Laguna Seca. So those will kind of go up around here. Um, I used to have these flags in my garage all, on the wall. I used to have one flag, a three by five flag for every car that I owned. So I, my first one was a BMW flag for, or I'm sorry, my first one was an Infiniti flag for my G35. Second one was a Honda flag for my Accord. Third one was a BMW flag for my E46 330Ci, and so on. And eventually, I got I had so many that they couldn't fit on the wall anymore. I ran out of wall space. And also, um, you know, I bought these flags off of eBay or Amazon or whatever. And when it came to Porsche, because I had a 911, man, the flag was like 40 bucks. And, and uh, I'm probably the, the cheapest uh, Porsche owner uh, in the world. So I was like, mm, I think this flag tradition stops here. But also I didn't like how the flags kind of sag and they like kind of flap in the wind. So it, I think in here, I want them to be, I want it to just be wall art, like uh, framed photos that just are stuck to the wall. Um, again, I want this to feel like it's an, an it's a part of the inside of the house. You know, you see those like multi-million dollar houses that have super cool garages that maybe have like a window where you can like see into the living room. And if you're in the living room, you can see like the Ferrari in the garage. Um, yeah, I, I'm not quite th at that level, <laughs> but nonetheless, I'm really inspired by the fact that those uh, 
garages are made to feel like they're in the inside of a house. So that's my goal here. I want it to feel like a nice place to be as if you're just anywhere in the house. You can be barefoot, socks, doesn't matter, and you still feel great. So yeah, those are the three steps. Number one, paint the walls and the ceiling. Number two, get the polyaspartic flooring. And number three, put up some wall art. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what about your tools? Like, where are they gonna go? Well. For starters, I'm not gonna put tools in the garage, which sounds crazy, I know, but I'm trying to go for a very minimalist, clean vibe. Remember those like multi-million dollar, you know, homes with like the window from the living room to the Ferrari in the garage, they don't have tools or even toolboxes lying around, right? They have it all hidden away. And again, I'm not trying to, you know, pretend that I'm like some multimillionaire, but what I am trying to do is draw inspiration from how minimalist and how neat that is. So. I'm gonna omit tools from here for now, uh, and and you know if if it gets to the point where like our, it's just a huge pain to go into the house to grab my tools and come back out, then then I might uh, start having some tools in the garage. But for starters, I'm gonna keep it super minimalistic. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, my name is James, and thanks for joining me on my channel. Um, my channel is all about just me sharing my love of cars and everything related to cars with you guys. So, you know, join the club, join, subscribe, hit the like button. It really helps out my channel a lot as I'm growing it from, you know, I have like 80 subscribers, which is like nothing. And I'm trying to grow this into something really wonderful where we can all share uh, our love of cars together. And so, yeah, thank you again for watching. Um, I have some really great videos coming up, uh, you know, revealing, I guess, the new car that I just bought, as well as uh, finally getting into my Miata, which I'm going up to NorCal to grab this weekend. I'm going to be driving, like driving up there, grabbing it, and then coming back down with my girlfriend. And that's going to be a bunch of videos in itself. So hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And you know, thank you so much for watching again and I'll see you next time. Not totally sure why they delivered four bins to us, two recycling and two trash, but, uh, Hey, why not?